just like looking shit up. I'm like, oh, this is a thing. I'm like, I'm pretty sure this is so. I write a story about contracts and stories like this all the time. Dateline and all that stuff. The short stories get shorter and shorter by the day. No, they don't. I talked to Coach Holtman yesterday. He said Caleb is back. I wonder how that impacts you guys both on the court and in the locker room when you get a guy back after you've had some tough go or tough times without him. <coughs> yeah, it's always nice just to have one of your teammates, one of the guys you're really close to being able to play with you out there. And, you know, he's had his ups and downs as we have, you know, this year. And it's just exciting for him to come back. Kyle, what do you think? Oh, yeah, for sure. It's, I mean, it's exciting. I know we talked uh, a little last week about how, how big of a piece he is, you know, when you're missing something like that. Um, we're all really glad to have him back, and it's good. To play devil's advocate, there could be resentment when you have a guy who gets suspended at that time of the season and you guys struggle without him. How have you guys emotionally, I guess, handled that, and are there things that you guys talk about as a team to make sure you're all on the same page? Uh, yeah, I think we're already, already on the same page. When things like that happen, you can't really – the way how fast the season goes, you can't really, you know, consume yourself around that. You just have to kind of push forward and try to make adjustments with him being out and then with him being back. Could there definitely be, you know, adjustments and change, but I think it's for the good just to have all of our pieces back. Kyle, as you said, Caleb obviously makes a big impact, but is he a big enough impact for you guys to feel confident making a run here? Obviously, we saw the game against Iowa and what you guys were able to do, and, and then he comes mm -hmm. out of the lineup. Does his impact give you more confidence in terms of a, a tournament run or can he be the the difference I guess um yeah for sure I mean I think it all really just depends on you know how we're preparing and how we come out every night because like I said last week um we're at our best you know when we're we're fully focused we, we prep really well um and like we have the talent we just we just got to do that with every game so um having him back is definitely huge um and yeah then yeah for sure CJ, it looked like twice during the Wisconsin game. Um, I think one time he got blocked, and then when half hit you with that screen at midcourt, it looked like he hit you right on the shoulder. Um, I just didn't like, did, did that have any lingering impact for you? I know you've been dealing with the, the soreness for a couple weeks now. Did that make it any worse, um, or you, is it still kind of the same as it's been the last few weeks? Uh, I'm not sure if it made it any worse at this point. It's, I feel like it's just going to be what it is. Uh, it's hurt, and, but we're at this point in the season to where you know, especially with it being my last go around, I just have to push through it and keep continuing to fight. And my teammates do a good job just picking me up and uh, just being able to be with them. It's out there on the floor. It's, it's, it's more important than my, my arm hurting. It, it's your offhand, right? It's not your, but th does it impact your shooting at all? Um, I mean, I feel it a little bit, but once you kind of get going in the flow of the game, you kind of just lose yourself. So you don't really, you don't really feel it until it really gets hit. CJ, can you? Put your finger on why every game with you in Indiana of recent, of recent vintage seems to be such a battle. Mm, just two teams that compete at a high level. Um, there is a really tough place to play, and then when they came here last year, it was, it was a good environment. So it's just two teams who just you know compete. We're, we're pretty evenly matched in the sense of uh, the way we, we way we run our offense and defense. So. To the point where you could describe them as a rival? Um, I'm not sure if they're a rival or not, but I just know both teams are highly competitive and you know, we want to win as, as bad. And usually 
when we see them, it's really a big stretch for us. And when they see us, it's, it's a big stretch for them. So they, they have something to prove, and so do we. Obviously, you guys want to make a run in the tournament and, and prolong your season. Uh, does this feel like, like a little bit of a play-in game? I mean, you guys are both sort of right on the tournament bubble, and I just wonder if that's something you guys um, feel going into this, adding a little bit more to the game. Um, I mean, yeah, with every game, I think it's important. Um, each and every game, the next game, you, you want to go in and you want to you want to play to win. But um, I think for sure it's a game that we need to go in a little bit more focused and, and uh, ready to get this win because I think it's important because uh, we're on the bubble so to get in. How does how do they look different since you guys last saw them? They've obviously ended the season pretty strong. Um, what have you seen watching them getting ready to face them again? Well, we just know that even though that they had a rush, rough stretch here in the conference season, that most of their games they were one or two possessions away. So we know it's not going to be an easy game. And uh, the, despite their record, it doesn't show what type of team they are. They're a really good team, and they'll be ready to play. So we have to be ready to match their intensity offensive, def defensively and just compete like the whole game. CJ, I know that you guys and Chris Holman has been saying the entire last couple months the, the same thing that Kyle said, that you guys just take it game by game and whatnot. But you know that this might be a playing game, and if you win this, and you know the stakes. When, when you look at this game specifically and what, what you've done against Indiana, just the same sort of question to, to Kyle. Do you, do you look at it differently knowing that this could be the one that gets you there? Um, I guess you could say that. We just know that how important this game is for us. We are aware of that. And this is kind of why you come to, you know, universities and the, this conference, just to be able to put yourself in the best position to make a run in the NCAA tournament. And we have our goal right in front of us. Um, I guess you could say we're right there. And when you, when you accomplish that, you know, that's kind of what you live for. When you face Indiana the first time, was there anything that surprised you about them? What did, what did you learn about them that you didn't know before that game? Um, probably just how physical physical the game was going to be. Their bigs um, bring a physical edge to the game that you know you don't can't always tell what you see on film. So that's probably the biggest thing I've taken from it. Even though you guys um, lost to Wisconsin, when you have a second half and a comeback like that, how does that carry over at all into practice into the next game as opposed to if you guys would have just lost by 20 in, in that game? Does it have any carryover? Um, you know, we always go back and um, when we're cleaning up and stuff and looking at film. I think there's a lot of good things we could take um, from that game and in that stretch, especially um, even the times when we weren't playing as well. There's a lot of good things we can take from that. Um, so it's definitely good seeing that um, how we played together during that certain stretch that we can hopefully, you know, carry that on and um, keep that thing going. CJ, could you talk about that too? Uh, yeah, like Kyle said, that we could definitely take things from from that experience and but I mean at the end of the day we still didn't win the game so you know but you still can learn your lessons so it's kind of tough in the sense of how you would describe that as momentum even though we didn't win mm -hmm. but and like like he said we can definitely take the parts of the game where where we struggled and learn from those experiences I also learned from when we were playing well down the stretch is there any bit of a letdown because you have a comeback like that, but you don't necessarily get over the hump to get the win? No, not, no letdown at all. Um, we did win the game at the end of the day, no matter if we won by 20 or, you know, lost in overtime. Um, but, you know, we have to continue to focus on Thursday because at this point, everything that's happened in the regular season is over. We can't control any of that at this point. It's basically a new season for everybody, and everybody starts fresh. And then Kyle, how's your leg doing? Chris Holman talked about how that's an injury where it's not going to get back to 100% unless you sit out for pretty much a month. Mm -hmm. How's playing with an injury like that? Um, it's tough just because with, with soreness sometimes. Um, you know, I try not to focus too much on it. I try not to think about it while I'm playing because I want to, you know, put everything I have out there. And that's what I've been trying to do. Um, you know, we're doing as much rehab as possible um, day to day, um, trying to get it stronger, things like that. Um, but yeah, pretty much until I get some time off, it won't be back to 100%. But you know, I'm still gonna give everything I have. Do you feel like you're limited at all? Um, to a point, maybe you could say that. But 
I'm still just going to give my all, you know, when I go out and play. So everything I have is going is going to be out there for sure. When you guys get to this time of year, you know, the the win and go home type of time. How do you flip that switch? Because throughout the whole season, you've had a next game. You know, each game doesn't necessarily matter quite as much because you still play. How, how does that flip your switch in your mind as a team? I think that just has to do with the, the competitiveness of the players on the team and the coaching staffs. And thankfully, we have guys that really compete at a high level and coaching staff that cares so much about you know each player. And, and so when it's like that, I don't think it's a, it's a much of a big switch for us personally. Just the experience you had last year, both of you, and the year before in the Big Ten tournament, does that help when you, when you go to those win or go home type of games, having been in that before at this level? Yeah, I think for sure um, when you have experience in anything, it's good um, when you've been through something before. So, um, I mean, even with me, though, like last year, I really I, I didn't play in the tournament. So, um, but like just being there, experiencing it, you know, the prep, um, you know, seeing what these guys did and what it takes uh, uh, to do that and play in the tournament um, is always important to have experience from that. CJ, I, was, I didn't want you to dwell on the last game, but... Did you have film review or a couple days afterwards? How are you feeling about the the shot that you took at the end of regulation in, in the tie game to shoot the three there? Um, definitely at the time, it, it, I'm a little disappointed about it for sure. Um, it's a shot that I work on and practice, you know, forever. But kind of got to move on from it. It happened. Um, players miss shots. Um, it is it is what it is at this point. I just got to be ready to take the next next shot next time that comes. Do they give you like discretion like that, like the coaching staff, if it's like tie game situation, if you feel the look is good enough, green light to pull the trigger, a shot like that? Uh, yeah, our coaching staff has unbelievable confidence in me, which gives me confidence as well, and also the rest of my teammates. And so when, when it comes down to times like that, um, it, just, it just feels normal and it feels free just because of knowing that I have my, the, the confidence from them and my teammates. Uh, we asked you about your leg. Is your ankle 100 percent at this point? Um, yeah, it's getting back. Uh, a lot of swelling is pretty much gone, and um, soreness is pretty much gone too. We're gonna keep, you know, strengthening it and doing exercises on it just in case. But, um, but yeah, it's it, it's getting there. Is there any part of your body that doesn't hurt at this point? <laughs> um, no, yeah, I'm good. I'll, I'll be all right. I'll be all right. Cal, you you were one of the guys in the court for the the last run, right? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to remember the lineup, but. Um, after a season when you've had the injuries that we've asked about so many times, but you played, I think, 33 minutes. And uh, what did that feel like for you after the, the season that you've had? And like CJ said, you obviously come up short, but um, to battle through what you battle through and to play such an important role mm -hmm. in such a crazy run, what did that feel like for you? Um, I was pretty sore after the game, I can tell you <laughs> that. Um, but no, it was it was fun, you know. Anytime the, the gym can get that loud and, um, you know, everyone was behind us, um, you know, the fans got into it. Um, you kind of lose yourself in those games, and you know when you're focused like that, it just it's just it's just fun. You're doing you love, and yeah, it's a good run. You're getting contributions from Musa, who hasn't played a lot lately, and, mm -hmm. and Justin comes in late and has some some big buckets. What is that like when it's kind of being spread around like that? Oh, it's huge. Um, you know, <coughs> having depth like we do, and having guys that can come in and uh, contribute on a nightly basis is is important. Um, you know, you're going to need that. You can't you can't always focus on couple guys, even though you might need to. Um, so it's good to have, have the people we do that can come in and contribute. All right, uh, hey guys. Um, obviously, uh, uh, preparation for uh, our next game in the Big Ten tournament here uh, versus Indiana, and uh, they're obviously playing really, really well here, um, and you know have had moments. Uh, I think you look at large sections of the season. Um, and, and, and some of their wins, but most importantly for us right now, they're 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 uh, as we prepare for them, they're playing exceptionally well. Uh, Morgan has played like a man possessed. Um, he really has. He's played like a you know a senior who was um, 
you know, an, an all league uh, performer. He just has played like a man possessed. I mean, he has been everywhere. Um, uh, and I, I think it's not just him. Smith has obviously had big games. Green's played very well. Obviously, Langford um, is, a, is a special talent, uh, and he's played exceptionally well. And I think Fennessey, in a lot of ways, um, has, has given them uh, great stability at the point guard position. Um, uh, Durham has played well at times. So, you know, they've got, they've got good depth. A couple guys, I think, that were injured um, and, uh, and, and are back now. Um, and uh, obviously, it's a group that's – Archie's done a great job. It's a group that's, that's playing very well. So, uh, great challenge for us. Caleb, as I mentioned, is back. Um, and, uh, um, you know, when we played them last time, you know, one of the things I was just really impressed with was um, – with Indiana was was their uh, ability to really guard and be active, um, particularly in the half court. Um, uh, you know, I noticed that preparing for them last time, and they've even ratcheted that up again with their length and size and athleticism. Uh, they're they're really really connected defensively, um, and and impacting things, and their numbers have improved. Um, so. Uh, you know, it's it, it's good to obviously have Caleb back. He played, um, I th you know, did some good things over there, but but uh, um, we're certainly going to need need more out of him as well as all of our guys because they we were fortunate to to get that one there. They they missed some shots that uh, uh, I'm sure they'll probably make. Chris, uh, you've talked a lot about how Caleb and Andre both are very emotional players. Um, with Caleb, when he hasn't played in three games, and I'm sure has yeah. heard about. The impact that his absence has had on your team. Like, are yeah. you on, are you on a heightened level of alert for over emotional Caleb, and, and how do you, I guess, try to get ahead of that in these next couple of days before you play? Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, no caffeine for the next three days for sure for him. Um, I, I think uh, just uh, he's got to be Caleb. You know, he's just got to be Caleb. I think I am. I am aware of that in in. It's, it's unique, you know, I've never been in a situation, whether it's an injury or suspension, never been in a situation where uh, you lose a guy and then he comes back right for the, for the conference tournament. It's just kind of a unique situation. So I, I don't really have a, a playbook for kind of what that's going to look like other than he's just got to be Caleb. And um, he's got to find a way to impact the game on both ends. I think it's important for him and for us to not uh, have a false sense of, okay, um, I mean, we know how good Indiana is. It's, it's you know, now that Caleb is back, uh, everything's everything's fine. We, we've got to play well, and and Caleb has to help his team play well now that he's back, um, and that's that's the bottom line. Uh, the three games you guys didn't have him, you had the worst effective field goal percentage in the country. Thank and you. <laughs> I, I had a feeling maybe you might have known that. Um, yeah. I know everything you build in your offense revolves around him, but even just sort of absent of that, just did you sense at all guys trying to overcompensate for the fact that you didn't have 14 points on the floor? And do you think that that might have led to that number being a little lower than it would have been otherwise? A little bit, yeah. I think a little bit. I think that and that led to some some inefficient nights. I think, um, uh, you know, you got to understand we we were not a great offensive team before that. Um, so um, we were kind of we're, we're, we're work, work in progress when it comes to that. So, um, you know, if you looked at our numbers before that, they were they were in the bottom half, bottom third of the league. Um, so it, it's always been something, Doug, that I've been trying to, to work and figure out, you know, what we can do as a coaching staff better, what I need to do better uh, in those situations. Um, so I think it was a byproduct of, hey, it's a team that ha has had some offensive struggles, and, and then we also played some good defensive teams. Um, and I think Purdue, Northwestern, and, uh, and obviously Indiana's in that boat. Purdue, Northwestern, Wisconsin are all top f five or six uh, in the league in defense, and we just, we just struggled. Um, we just struggled, really. You mentioned on the teleconference yesterday that Caleb's been doing conditioning and whatnot, <clears throat> but I'm curious... What else has he been able to do in practice? Obviously, he wasn't playing, so are you using him scout team? Yeah. You know, where, where does he kind of sit in terms of coming back and, and being familiar with everything you guys have done? 
Well, he, he's been with us, in, uh, and that's why I've, I've kind of um, had him with us. So everything that we've done, he's, he's been a part of, and uh, he, he was on scout team. Um, and he was doing additional workouts in the morning with uh, Coach Q. So he was doing two workouts a day. Um, he was doing a morning workout uh, that was required um, uh, as well as uh, uh, practice. Um, and then some post-practice conditioning. So we've obviously scaled back on that, given the fact that that we play on Thursday. But uh, we'll see. There, there's no, um, you know, there's no nothing we can really do to to replicate fully the game pace, the game speed. So I do think wind uh, uh, may be a concern. It's something I'm going to try to monitor uh, closely. And he's going to have to play through a little bit of it too. He's going to play through some fatigue. Your players have talked about embracing Caleb and wanting him back and keeping him back. As a coach, when you have a guy that gets suspended at this point of the season, are you, do you have to be on alert a little bit for guys, I don't know, for resentment or, or whatever, but being upset at a guy who is not there for them at a key part of the season? Do you have to watch for that as a coach? Yeah, but I think, um, listen, uh, you know, what do you do when you get angry with your wife? I mean, don't tell me, but, um, you know, like, Okay, so, you know, you talk it through. You have a conversation. You, you don't let that um, uh, build to, to resentment. Um, you know, when you're when you're a part of a, a situation where you care about people, then those kind of conversations need to be real, honest, and and authentic and real. And that's the ex- that's my expectation that that that, that has happened. Um, if there are some things, and I'm sure there probably have been. Um, but you know we we've, we've done as much as we can to to put it behind us, but um, I think those conversations um, have happened. Does some of that come from recruiting a certain type of personality, a certain type of kid? When you talk about like wanting to build your program here, is that part of what do you look for guys that can handle a situation like this in that way? Is that part of the makeup of what when you talk about wanting to get Buckeyes? Like, is that part of what? You um, think? you know, I, it, it's different. I think. You know, adults tend to look at these things differently than than players and teammates. Um, uh, and, uh, um, uh, and and young people in general. So, you know, I just think that um, uh, they have uh, their feelings on it. We have our feelings. We've talked about it. Uh, we put it behind us. Um, I think uh, it's been a learning experience for, for everybody. Um, and we're moving on non Caleb related but switching to postseason play just the mentality of win and go home that type of thing how do you get your team to, to flip that switch given you've gone through a whole season where there's always a, a next game to, to build on things or what yeah uh, you know I think we're just focused on uh, we're just focused on doing our best to play uh, to be our best and to play our best and to focus in on uh, as small of segments as we can in terms of um, our play, uh, and not think in terms of grand, uh, grand as grand a scale. We're trying to figure out, um, you know, how do we how do we play well in, the, in this this opening stretch of the game, and uh, obviously that takes great preparation. So beyond that, uh, uh, you know, I think uh, the unspoken is always there. Guys understand what tournament play is all about, and. Uh, uh, if we don't have great preparation and and play with with tremendous urgency, um, then it it it'll be a short short stay. The the tournament aspect, like the the pressure is there. Obviously, the importance is obviously there. Do you like coach into them or spend some time allowing them to have some fun, realizing how much fun this time of year is supposed to be? Yeah, you know, I I think we're. You know, we're, you're talking about in Chicago or just in just, Chicago if you make it into the big dance. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. You know, I, I think that uh, you know it's it's uh, believe it or not. You know, the, these these situations uh, are can be stressful for 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 kids, and they they know what's all going around them and all of that. It can be stressful, so I, I think you are trying to uh, minimize that as much as possible. Part of that is 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 having. Uh, an enjoyable experience and, and realizing that this is a game we're playing and we're doing it together and it's a choice we make. And, um, uh, but, but 
you hope that also guys understand that, that part of the fun is is working through some of this stuff together and then seeing the rewards of that together. Um, that is part of the fun. And, uh, um, you know, I, I think that, that that's a process that our guys have to continue to understand. Do, do you think they've been pressing? Uh, perhaps, yeah, perhaps, uh, you know, uh, along with what Bill said, you know, I think uh, everybody in some ways probably trying to do a little bit more. Um, and, and that happens when you struggle. And uh, um, I think I think certainly we saw it in, uh, on Sunday uh, where we pressed a little bit in the, in the stretch of the, the second half. And I think it's just guys trying to, you know, trying to make a play and trying to, um, you know, we talk a lot about hitting singles, and that's hard for young people to understand because it's much more fun to hit home runs. Is there any benefit to finding out that Caleb was going to play yesterday and instead of maybe tomorrow? Where you've got some extra time to game plan for him being in the rotation. I think all you know. Um, oh, you're saying for for uh, for us or for Indiana? For you. Uh, you know, I think um, we had a pretty good idea um, uh, when he was going to be returning, um, so it didn't it didn't impact necessarily us in a whole lot of ways. I just as much as anything, I just wanted to say it uh, yesterday just to kind of get it behind us so we can move forward. Chris, you had said. Um after the Wisconsin game, that you were trying to avoid big picture, looking yeah. at the big picture. Have you been able to successfully do that, considering that this matchup in many ways looks like sort of a playing game? Yeah. You know, I, I think uh, it's we're, we're not uh, immune, right? We're not uh, people have TVs and, and these things are as, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. So you guys like to constantly remind me of our scenario which is something I've really appreciated over the last couple of weeks. Um, I, I, yeah, I, I, listen, it's it's part of it. I think everybody gets it. Everybody understands it. Um, uh, but, again, I think as much as possible, um, you know, my job is, is just to get our team uh, as prepared as they can uh, to play as aggressive uh, as possible and, and understanding what, Playing more possessions of good basketball looks like, and that, that's that's really that's really it. The other stuff, um, just honestly, Lori, it doesn't. Uh, we don't have a lot of long-standing conversations about it because I just think it's it's a distraction. How do we just find a way to play a few more possessions of good basketball? That's that's our job as coaches to prepare our guys as well as possible for that. I don't think really conversations outside of that help that cause. I, I hate to ask another big picture question then, but you and in Indiana, the past couple of years, the games have been close. Yeah. It seems like the, the times that you've met have always been sort of crucial times. And now that you, you're here in an 8 9 game, is there a reason for the, the, that it seems like your matchups have been so dramatic? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Good question. Uh, Three times we played three times in the last two years. Two of them really have been the flip of the coin. They really, you know, we could be sitting here honestly and and be looking at uh, having lost the last couple. Um, they they really have. Our guys have made a couple plays down the stretch that, that have been the difference. Um, uh, so I, I don't know. I, I I don't know why necessarily the games have have the last two games have been close. Um, I, you know, I don't. I'm, I'm not quite sure on all that. I think both teams maybe play a similar style. I'm, I'm not sure. Is this you wanted to win Sunday? You didn't win, but is yeah. this team at any different place today because you didn't lose by 20? Because you came back and you did all that? Does that? Is there anything of that that is a something you can point to or a carryover at all? Yeah, you know, I've thought about that, and I, and I hope so. Um, it certainly would have. Um, uh, I think been been hard to have lost um you know three consecutive games by double figures just just when your team is already a little bit um can be a little bit uh it's certain you know young and and maybe you know some would say in, at times fragile so uh, i think i think that would have been that would have been diff difficult i think hopefully what we can hang on to is um you know we had some some really good stretches 
uh, in the Wisconsin game. Some early, um, a lot late, um, not as much in the middle, and hang on to that. Try to try to build um, from that and build off of that. Um, you know, I, I you certainly would have would have preferred to feel the win and the momentum that 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 creates. Um, but um, you know, it's on us to create create that momentum on Thursday. What have you and the, the rest of the coaches done to try and get Luther out of the funk he's been in for about a month now? Just just kept working. You know, we've done, done a lot of uh, skill work with him. Just continue to work with him, continue to wa- uh, watch film with him, continue to show him what, um, you know, good shots look like. I think uh, he's got to he's gotta let it come to him a little bit more, continue to impact the game in ways that he can. I think he's pressed a little bit at times. But um, uh, that's – you know, that's kind of what we've done with them. Down that stretch at the end, you had a lineup that was working and you wrote it. Yeah. How are you, how much are you, is like the mental coaching of that, of just don't mess this up, don't, like I'm sure you're trying to figure out, do I want to put this guy or that guy? Right. But like what are those conversations or those debates like as far as riding a lineup that was that was doing so well for you? Well, you know, uh, I did have a couple of the guys ask me, Adam, about uh, subbing someone in late, um, I can't remember if it was regulation or overtime. Might have been, might have been overtime. Um, but um, you know, we just said we were going to roll with that group because we felt like they were defending well and and playing well together. And you know, I thought our 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 seniors there, particularly the last ten minutes, were really playing like seniors <clears throat> um, in terms of just really really hungry. Um, so it was it was a pretty easy call. You worried a little bit about fatigue. But, uh, you know, we've done that some this year where we've just kept the lineup in. I think we did that against, like, Creighton late where we just kept them in the last five minutes because they were playing well. When you have a lineup like that that's playing well and you have a guy like Musa in the middle of that who's not yeah. done, not contributed a lot as of late, at least in, in the games, what does that do for a guy like that? And, and what were you seeing from him that was enabling him to be one of those guys? Well, we had talked going into the game that we, we did not have a great matchup for Iverson. Um, and um, and so we talked to him prior to the game about about the importance that that he was going to be. We just, you know, we just didn't have a great, we you know we we didn't have a great matchup for Iverson. And, and obviously Iverson had a good day, um, but uh, we kind of challenged him with, um, you know, we need you in this moment. I thought he did some good things um, on both ends. Regarding the uh, the integration reintegration of Caleb into the offense, and how do you balance? Micromanaging that versus letting him get his footing over six, seven, eight minutes. Yeah, I, I think uh, we'll, we'll kind of play that. It'll it'll be a bit of a feel thing, um, you know, depending on the circumstances of the game and how he looks like he's doing there. You know, the, the the one thing about their they've got two very athletic bigs that they're playing and, and two mobile bigs that they're playing, uh, and the big fell off the bench to, has done a really good job for him as well. Um, so he's he's got to you know he's got to manage their mobility and he's got to um, you know we've got to get a feel for how he how he does in the in the first stretch of the game and see what his conditioning is like and we'll kind of go from there. Okay, thanks, thanks guys.